It's International Men's Day and a chance to open up the conversation about men's mental health. And sadly, the stats say it all. Every day, 12 men take their own life by suicide and it remains the biggest killer of men under 50. We've all been forced to confront our mental health like never before over the past two years and now even the toughest men in the world are being trained to open up about their feelings. I was recently invited to the Royal Marines Training Centre in Limpston to chat to the very man in charge of training up commandos, Colonel Simon Chapman or BE, and I found out how they're dealing with mental health in the armed forces. Now, before we talk about it, let's take a look at what I learned. Nothing but pure respect for everyone in the armed forces. Royal Marines, an elite fighting force. Mike, there's lots of parallels between the Royal Marines and members of our armed forces and what you did for a living in the fact that you play in a team, you compete as a team, you work together as a team, but once you leave the armed forces, mental health has become a big talking point, as it is with sports stars. Once you've cut steps away from something that you've committed and dedicated your life to and then walked away, what's next? Yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think it's hard. You, you know, I do some work with a charity called Rugby for Heroes, which is... We do a lot of pre-seasons with... So I've been down to Limpston. Clive Woodward took that England group in the early 2000s down there and we did a lot of the stuff that they went through and the whole point was... You know, for them to judge how we work together at a team and, and sort of whittle out the ones that they didn't think could work as a team. So unlucky for Austin Healy. Um, but we, <laughs> uh, no one minds about that. But, uh, um, yeah, oh, and it is difficult. If you, you know, if you put it in a professional rugby players, you know, I, had, I went to work every year for 17 years with 35 to 40 of my best mates and just used to hang around with them, be like typical blokes all the day, every day. And then one day, you know, you wake up and if you haven't planned for the future, you wake up and your six month isn't planned. It's not on your fridge, so your wife can see it. So and then suddenly you, you're like, well, I actually don't need to get out of bed today. I don't need to go to the gym. I don't. And and suddenly it's a quite a a lonely place to be. And that doesn't matter how successful your career is. You just and a lot of time for the military, you then don't even have. They won't necessarily. They'll all, they'll all still be on uh, out on m maneuvers or whatever. So you can't ring them. Mm. You know, and, and you know, and you fall away from your friends in rugby because they're still training. If they're all still playing, it's the same thing. And um, you end up start saying yes to everything and starting trying to fill that those times. And sort of with the like rugby for heroes, what we try and do is because rugby is built around that social community, is try and get those military into a social uh, sport, which is like rugby, and, and and try and and try and help out from there and give them another family as soon as they lose one. But yeah, it's not easy. And you know, it, people think it it will it doesn't matter. Oh, you've had such a good career in your sport and just think you can walk well, on. It's not because it's it's more about your you mentally not being prepared for that. Was there, was there a moment uh, or a period of time where you were struggling, where you were thinking, oh my gosh, what do I do now? Yeah, yeah, there's a point where you suddenly... I was saying yes to everything, whether I wanted to do it or not, because I was used to have my days filled and, you know, I thought it was, like, six months where I, I really didn't sort of know where you wanted to go. Um, mm. Zara would say it was probably more like a year. I ended up going and doing Bear grills, and then... Uh, so I was away when the Autumn Internationals were on, so I didn't have to watch the rugby that I probably was so used to Interesting. So you turned your back on it? S sort of. I wanted to have a sort of break, break. A, a bit about Did it. Did you of... consciously make that decision of, I'll do a thing to not have to witness, have FOMO from this event, or do you think it was more subconscious? Yeah, no, it, it was... I, it was a conscious decision. It was, you know, within sport, you've got to be slightly selfish about how you do it. And, and probably for the first six, as Zara said, 12 months, I was probably <laughs> a little bit selfish again about trying to figure out what was best for me in terms of... And that was why I sort of sort of disappeared away from it in the periods where the Autumn Internationals were on and the Six Nations were on. And, and obviously, Mia had just been born just before I retired. So, yeah, you know, it, 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 was, it was a strange... Strange period, yeah. and that's even for some some of that. It's interesting that you talk about like trying to fill your schedule up and trying to just almost distract away from the stuff that was going on in your head. Because you know, I mentioned about Portia being at home with her with both of our kids. I'm away on tour, and while I'm doing that, you know, FaceTiming as best as you can, but you're completely helpless to that practical element of wanting to be a father. And so I've just been completely filling up the diary, filling up the diary, just to try to do whatever I could. And it got to a point, and I was I woke up this morning, I was like, I'm not sure if I'm going to share this because um, I feel better and it, it probably doesn't matter. But because we're here and we're talking about it and I know it will affect a lot of people. Um, yesterday I had my first ever panic attack and um, it completely consumed me. I was, I was on the phone to my agent actually at the time and I was just talking about all the things that were in the diary and it was getting, I could feel myself sort of filling up with 
the stress that I'd managed in a way. Usually, I, you know me, I'm all about the yeah. lists and the diaries and I've got everything written down. And in that moment, as I was filling up, I couldn't breathe. I could barely speak and this poor girl was on the phone going, or oh, I just breathe, open a window, and I just burst into floods of tears. Is that and the first time that's ever happened? That's the first time that has ever happened. And I've always felt like I was able to manage my emotions and, you know, lockdown was tough for it because so much was going on in your head and, I, you know, whether it was going and doing a bit of a gym session or a walk, that was the first time I couldn't deal with it and I could feel it coming over me. And I thought today was probably the best place to say it amongst this lot, knowing that there's going to be a lot of guys watching and going, OK, I thought that would never happen to me, and it has. Mm. And I've, I, I feel good having identified it. I wasn't sure if I was going to tell my wife, but I knew that this would probably be the first and time I'd what, say uh, it. Porsche, and then yeah, she'd yeah, be yeah, What a way to find out. But honestly, the thing is, you don't want to... Because she's at home and she's got the two kids, my first reaction was, I don't want to lumber her with more things that she's got well, going let on. Me, let me ask you this. One of the problems with us, guys, and mental health, is we don't talk about it. We, we, I think we still put it away and think, oh, I'll be all right. But now that that's happened to you, would that spark a conversation with your mates? I mean, you've said it to the nation, you've said it on live television. So now you've got the opportunity to say, oh, I, I, I recognise this situation that I'm in. It could happen again. So now you can prepare for it, I guess. Yeah, I, t I, I couldn't agree more. Because I think us as, you know, we're on this panel because we're quite happy talking and we know within our group of guys that yeah. we can say some stuff, but you mentioned it before we started the show, that it's really important to get into the deeper stuff with your, with your mates. And actually, the more regularly you say it, the less it becomes an issue, the, the less you think, oh, I need to keep that to myself because it's probably a... It's not much. And actually, the health of you, like in the same way that you do fitness and go to the gym, your mental health needs yeah. to be exercised and every day. And also, when you chat, you realise how much you've all got in common. And, Ian, you were here last time yeah. on, on Loose Men, and uh, you've got a new way of looking at mental health and how we approach it and how we deal with it. Yeah, well, it's so nice to hear my, my mate talk about that sort of thing, and I'm just so sorry it happened to you, man, and, like, but I'm so glad you can open up about it, and that's why I feel this show's so important. I feel like last year it was raising awareness of mental health. That's what last year's show was about, and this year it's about normalising it. Everyone knows it's a thing now, and what people need to realise is mental health is as much a part of your health as anything. If you were talking last night on the phone to your agent and your back went so bad that you started crying, then your agent would be like, go and get your back seen to. You wouldn't be <laughs> running around like the hunchback of Notre Dame going, it's probably nothing. You would go to a doctor and get it seen to. And it's surely the exact same thing with mental health. We need to, we need to normalise it more. We need to, it, you should look at going to see someone about your mental health. Like going to see, it's not going to see a doctor, it's like going to see a personal trainer. You're just exercising that muscle. But do you think that stigma is still there, mental health and talking about it? Do you think it's still seen as a weakness? Is that why we don't talk about it like a sprained ankle or a... Uh, or a I don't, th I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I th I, well, look, coming from a sport that's seen as quite macho, I think, I think the players have changed a lot in terms of, you know, there was always that thing, I'm not going off. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. I'm injured, I'm fine. Yeah. Or if you get smashed in the head and you can't really... You've seen stars. No, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. Whereas I think that has changed now. And, and you yeah, know, I remember playing games when I was injured and I shouldn't have played. And, but it was all that thing, you know, I'm fine and I want to yeah. play. Whereas I think that has changed a lot. You know, my, my dad's got Parkinson's and he probably wasted three years knowing he had something wrong with him before he went and got checked. And, you know, I've met quite a few people through Parkinson's um, and people with Parkinson's and all of them say they probably delayed going. They all, they all delay going to yeah. get checked out. Interesting. And, and I think that's the problem with, with blokes is, you know, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen a doctor outside of my club doctor. I have never been to the doctors. And, you know, I had, a, I had sort of something on my head, actually, what I wasn't sure about. And you can't then preach about telling blokes you've got to get checked. So I had to go get, get it, and it ended up being nothing. And, you know, there's that un early onset dementia in rugby at the moment, so it's key, I'm going to go get checked, because yeah. I prefer to know about it and be able to do something about it than find out later when you, you, you're possibly too far gone or yeah. be able to, you know, take control of it. Do you know what? We could sit here for a week. And, and just very quickly, just to say that we are, none of us are mental health experts, and if you are having any problems, go and see an expert. I mean, like, I'm a comedian, he wears stockings, you know, if I love it. Andy's on Rocky Horror Show. And, like, um, <laughs> we aren't trained professionals, and there are loads out there, there's loads of numbers and all that, so you can, yeah, you can go and have a little chat. Absolutely. With and the Family Fortunes interactive DVD is still available. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's really good. Yeah, yeah it's really absolutely good. Before Gino's one comes out. <laughs> uh, if anything we've talked about has resonated with you, then, like Ian said, please head to the ITV website, where helplines 
and places to go for your support are available.